Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Friedman from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts, and Harvard Medical School, where I'm director of our pancreas center at Beth Israel. In this Mission Cure video, we will go over how we diagnose exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, EPI, also referred to as PEI in some parts of the world, and its treatment. I'll specifically review what EPI is, diagnosis, treatment, frequently asked questions, and learning more about this disease. EPI, or excrement pancreatic insufficiency, occurs when the excrement pancreas doesn't make enough digestive enzymes. And as a result, you have difficulty digesting and absorbing nutrients, including fat, protein, and carbs. This can lead to vitamin deficiencies, weight loss, as well as classic symptoms of EPI, such as bloating, abdominal distension, and a type of diarrhea called steatorrhea. Over the years, there's been a multitude of different tests that have been employed to try to diagnose an individual as having EPI. The classic had been the 72-hour fecal fat test where you would consume 100 grams of fat a day for three days and collect the stool throughout that entire time period. And then the total amount of fat would be analyzed. And if you had more than seven grams of fat per 24 hours, that was consistent with EPI. But we know this is a very cumbersome test. It's difficult to be on that much fat each day. And there's a lot of variability, even day to day within a single individual. And there's been a number of other tests including breath tests, as well as certain blood tests, looking at certain pancreatic enzymes, such as trypsin. And many of these just aren't that helpful. They're not that reliable. And they may be dependent on your diet, as well as whether or not you're on pancreatic enzymes already. Nowadays, the most common test that we all use is called the fecal elastase. And this test, what we're looking at is the concentration of a pancreatic enzyme, elastase, in the stool. We're measuring the concentration of elastase. So it's expressed as micrograms of elastase per gram of stool. And the reason I'm bringing it up that this we're measuring the concentration, because if you have diarrhea for any cause, then you will automatically have a very low elastase value because the stool will be dilute in the setting of having diarrhea. So this must be done on a form stool, otherwise it does not count. And a lot of physicians don't quite recognize that. So you wanna test on just any random stool test, but it has to be formed. And we measure the fecal elastase, the stool elastase, and if it's over 200 micrograms per gram of stool, that's generally normal. Much less than 200 can be consistent with EPI, especially if it's much less than 100. You can be on pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy, and that will not affect this stool test. And we all send this out to basically the same uh, companies to get it analyzed, so it doesn't make a difference where it's being sent from anywhere in the country or in the world here. So that is our gold standard. It's fecal last days nowadays. We have two options. We can test for fecal last days and that would guide whether or not we start someone on pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy or PERTS. Or the other option is if someone has classic symptoms of EPI, which I've talked about in the other video that's on the Mission Cure website. If you have classic symptoms and you have known exocrine pancreatic disease, such as cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, untreated celiac disease, your physician may go ahead and just automatically treat for EPI with pancreatic enzymes. And if you get dramatically better, 
So that's theateria or diarrhea resolves, your GI symptoms otherwise go away, then that would be both diagnostic of EPI as well as therapeutic. So we may just go ahead and do that. Can the coexistence of other conditions like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is common, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, could you have an infection with a parasite called Giardia? Would that cause a misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis of EPI? Absolutely. Individuals with those different conditions can present with potentially oily stools, especially if you have another condition called bile salt malabsorption, especially if you've had your gallbladder out, you malabsorb bile and you can have oily stools that may mimic EPI. So if you have these other conditions, it's important for your physician and especially a gastroenterologist to sort out, is it one of these other conditions here? And again, if we're not sure, we may recommend fecal assays testing again, on a form stool. You may already have EPI, but on top of it, you all of a sudden having recurrence of diarrhea, steatorrhea, despite being on pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy that had in the past been working. So your doctor may want to sort out, do you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that's now exacerbating conditions and that would be treated with certain antibiotics? Have you instead developed a parasite such as Giardia, if you've traveled to an area such as Northern New England, if you're here uh, in this part of the country where Giardia may be more common. Do you have now underlying Crohn's disease to go looking for this? Uh, and again, if you have no history of pancreatic disease, your doctor probably wants to go through a very thoughtful assessment of all these other conditions here. So timely diagnosis of EPI and treatment is critical, especially if you're having a lot of GI symptoms, but if you're losing weight, if you're having trouble with eating because of bloating, distension, and you're having a lot of abdominal cramping, it's important you let your physicians know about this and you get worked up for potentially EPI, especially if you have a history of pancreatic diseases. I mentioned chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, but also diabetes itself. Diabetes for any cause can predispose to EPI. And if you're having these symptoms of EPI, your doctor needs to work this up further. If you'd like to learn more about EPI and its risk factors and symptoms and PERT dosing, watch our Mission Cure related videos. And while EPI is common in pancreatitis and cystic fibrosis patients, there is hope because once this is diagnosed, this is actually very easily treatable. And your doctor will go through not only treatment strategies with enzymes, but also go through diet and nutrition. And ongoing research is improving treatments for these underlying diseases. Thank you.